You're watching New Car Spin. As you can tell, that is a Genesis. And this is a coffee. I'm starting to see a resemblance here. Everyone's starting to use these flying wings. This is actually the G80. And if you look at the grill very closely, you'll see that it, it's the EV version of the G80. And it's not with this radar here. It's actually with the door panel right there. And I'll show that in a bit. Uh, weirdly, I mean, even though it's just as similar as the G80 sedan I drove with the V6, I don't know what that light means. I don't know what that's for. Uh, charging status? I have no idea. And I only just noticed that after having it for a week. So, um, if you don't know where I am, it's basically, I don't know what you would call, like, downtown Frisco. It's across from the Dallas Football Club Stadium. And it's time to uh, jump in the car. Which doesn't have a sunroof for a specific reason. But it does have a pretty nice interior. And let's do that now. It's harder to get in and out of this car. Mainly because, let's get my coffee in here. This is an actual EV. If I shut the door, you'll notice there's soft closed doors. There we go. And the car moves the seat forward and I can start it up or power it on. Which one is it? Can you start an EV or do you turn it on? We also have the Lexicon stereo. We have heated and vented seats on the front. The back looks very spacious, but the biggest problem is headroom. There is none. I'm in the front seat and it's really bad in the back, but basically because there's no sunroof, they've done everything they can to get the space higher up in the vehicle. And that's because the battery down there below the seats and in the floor so let's put it in drive Head to this way for a second now this car comes in at about 4100 pounds with the v6 engine which i drove about a year and a half ago and i said hey this v6 genesis g80 is quite the competitor to the mercedes i don't know why anyone would get a mercedes at this point because Genesis used to be considered an underdog, but now it's really a competitor. However, they make this EV version of that same car that I really liked, and things aren't going so well. And let me go this way, actually, to illustrate that for you. Sorry about this chaos here, but that's just how I roll. Here we go. Nice and open space. First off... Being that it's an EV, we're obviously limited by range. And I'll show you how difficult that is here. Not only just because we're in Texas, but because it's an EV. First, you'll see how high up the floor is compared to the rest of the cars that you get into. This is the problem. I'm trying to get in my car. See that? How do you even get in the back seat of this car? Oh, oh. And once I do, that's not very comfortable now, is it? And this car comes in at eighty thousand dollars, equipped this way. But it's like, look, look at the headrest. <laughs> so <laughs> there is no space in this car. They can't do much. I've never seen a sedan with an unusable back seat. This is almost like having a 2 plus 2, like a Toyota GR86 or a Porsche 911 or a Mercedes SL with those little token back seats. This is just a little bit bigger version of that, but still, it's like, how are you supposed to use this? Anyway, let's get out of here. <clears throat> And then it gets worse. It's beeping at me because I left it on. Trunk looks normal, right? 
we have um, cargo net, we have our cable system, but then back in there we have a hump. And I'm assuming those are the uh, drive motors for the rear wheels. You'll notice there's no fuel filler flap converted into an EV charging port. When going around the car, you're like, okay, where do I charge it from? And, uh, well, it'll take you a while, so I'll just tell you right now, it's right here. So that's pretty slickly integrated into the car where you might end up getting this pretty wet. I don't know how this is going to uh, last against, like, rain intrusion, but I wouldn't charge an EV in the rain anyway. Let's pop the hood, because I've never done that. First, we'll turn it off. There we go. Ding, ding. It's an interesting car otherwise. It sounds pretty solid. What? I swear there's no engine on this car. Why do they do it like that? What is the deal here? <clears throat> that is the strangest thing I've ever seen. I swear to you, this is not a gas motor. There's no <laughs> fuel filler flap. You can't even put gas in it. So, so strange. So there's no, there's no storage up front either. Which also actually explains why it's so confusing. It comes with three years of 36,000 miles of uh, maintenance. Complimentary, of course. But watch what happens when I start it up. Service in five days. I thought the whole selling point of an EV was that it doesn't need to go in for service. It doesn't need an oil change. I guess I'm wrong. Apparently it has an electric engine up front. <laughs> So $81,495, and this thing weighs 5,000 pounds. So it's 1,000 pounds heavier than the gas engine version. And uh, the EPA numbers are never accurate, so I would ignore that completely. Um, I haven't experienced any range on it because I haven't really driven it much. I, I'll tell you why. But just looking at this, there it is. Three years, 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. It's an EV. What kind of maintenance do you do on this thing? Anyway. Um, let me show you the real issue I have with this car. So we're going to drive this way. We're actually in Frisco, Texas. And if I make a left and a right and a left and a right and another left and a left after that, um, well, we're in for a surprise here. So here I am on the parking lot side of things on like a little busy downtown street kind of thing. I don't know what you would call this commerce area. <clears throat> And we're gonna make our left. We're gonna make our right. What is that straight ahead? That is City Hall. So let's drive around the City Hall for a second. Obviously, it is construction, but uh, that's not what I'm trying to get at here. Driving through. A lot of parking. Parking, 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 parking. parking. More parking. Okay, we got a movie theater with a vast empty parking lot. More parking, 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 parking. Uh, church down there. Okay, we are in front of City Hall. Parking, 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 parking. Parking, parking, parking. Nice, very nice. But you notice something that's missing here?
Google Lexus driver. I could make a right and there'd be more parking, 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 blah, 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 blah. Do you figure it out yet? Do you know what it is? There are no EV charging stations even at the Frisco City Center Town Hall. So, <clears throat> owning a car like this means that you really need to figure out where you're going to go on a daily basis or how you're going to get around. Like if you're a real estate agent or if you are a uh, salesperson, you really have like very limited capabilities with an EV, especially when you can't charge conveniently or in a convenient space. So we could go to the map, but then I'd have to go through like all the different pieces of, let's see, EV range. Okay. So there's supposed to be a charger around here, but the problem is I have to find it. Okay, so let's go to that charging station. Let's just see, I really, really need one. Or actually, let's go back for a second. I'll go back home, go to EV. Okay. Searching, searching, searching. Let's go back in here. I see one on the map right there. In 600 feet, make a U-turn if possible. Okay, so we're gonna follow this map to where it says the blink charging station Back is. Recalculating. Turn right. We're and going, we're going, we're going. Left. And that's that's a funny thing too, because when I see ads for EVs now, they're always plugged in. So is that a subliminal message? Like this is what your life's gonna be like? You're gonna be constantly plugged in? Or um, do they think that's just a cool, hip and trendy thing to do? I don't know. All right, so it says it's straight ahead. Do you see a charger? Do you see it? It says it's in here. You have arrived at your destination. It's a parking your garage. Guidance is finished. Do you see it? I don't see it. Where is it? <laughs> There's no freaking charging around here. I, even if it's on the map, it's gone or it doesn't exist. I'll go up one more level just to make sure. But yeah, it's not here at all. I see nothing. Not even on that next level. Not even in this corner. Nope. There's no EV charging here. Could you imagine if you had set this as a destination and you like desperately needed to get a charge and you come here and it's gone or it doesn't even exist? Nice 360 camera, by the way. So <clears throat> the G80 itself is a great car with the V6 engine, but when they electrified it and raised the floor and increased the weight by a thousand pounds, and then you have to deal with the EV life. This is your EV life right here. Going and venturing through parking garages, which may or may not be the safest thing to do at any time. There's nothing in that corner either. Okay, so let's try this parking garage over here. Yeah, they have torque and there's some power, but this is a big trade-off. I don't think there's anything down that way. <clears throat> More parking. More nothingness. It's just all nothing. I mean, why would you have to go through a parking garage and up to another level just to get to your charging station? It doesn't make any sense. All right, so um, let's try and find the next charger that may or may not exist. I think we'll go over here for a second. We'll 
go to home, EV, boom. Nope, it's not there, we tried. EV charging station, Frisco Square. All right, so the first one didn't exist. Second one, boom. Set its destination. Hmm. Okay, so we go. The route guidance will start now. Turn right this onto way. Coleman Boulevard and then turn <clears throat> right. Yeah, this is fun, isn't it? This is one of the most boring videos I've ever made. Turn right onto Frisco Square Boulevard and then turn right. But I'm trying to make a point here. My point is if you're aimlessly driving around to find a charging station, uh, even though you're on electricity instead of gas, I mean, is that is that actually efficient? No. Right onto Frisco Square Boulevard. And are there any efficiency standards for EVs? You know, is there something that says, oh, they ha they must get, you know, uh, ten miles per, you know, uh, so much charge? No, that doesn't exist either. So. You're basically at the point of like it's the wild wild west for these EVs. Destination is on your right. Destination is on my right, she says. I don't see a her charging station over here. It's there on the map, but it's not here in real life. <laughs> what is you this? Have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is finished. Nope. There's no charging station here. This is all street parking, and there's nothing on that sidewalk. And there's nothing on this sidewalk. And we're in downtown Frisco at the square. Let's try this again, okay? So that's two charging stations that don't exist. Let's go to EV. And see how it calculates your distance and like where you're supposed to charge, but it's not there. And this is not like a knock on this car. This is a knock on, um, well, just G EVs. I mean, let's try this one. Set its destination. This might be a charge point. Now we're gonna make a U-turn here. Go for the it. route guidance will start now. Let me back up and then make that U turn. Also, because this is an EV, I think that the turning circle is not as tight as it is on the gas edge either. But I could be wrong. I don't have any data to back that up. I just go by the gut. Okay, so it should be to the right. Now, a movie theater is the perfect place to have a charging station because you can charge your car for hours while you're doing nothing. Turn right and then turn left. Okay, we're gonna make a right and then a left. To a hospital. Well, there's just a valet over there. You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is finished. No, I haven't. So now you see three for three. No char. There's no charging station at the front of a hospital emergency room. I guarantee you that. All right, so let's try this again. EV charging station. What else is around here? Cinemark. We just went by it. Uh, Frisco Square, 5720. So, we know none of that's there. The YMCA. <laughs> okay, we can, we can, uh, charge at the gym. Something I need to do anyway. So let's go. Let's see where it is. All right, let's go for it. Uh, we're going to pull out in front of traffic, though. The route guidance will start now. Turn right onto Dallas Parkway and then turn left. Okay, we're gonna go for it. In 700 feet, turn left onto Main Street. <coughs> turn left onto 
yeah it it definitely moves but i don't know if that power is necessarily worth having to live this kind of lifestyle and any ev not just this particular one and that's 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 very strange right because now we're going by a grocery store which is a pretty big one you might have all heard of heb and then sub shopping and still not a single ev charger and everyone's like oh no you're supposed to charge at home and it's like well no what if you're not at home what if how are you supposed to even like visit family and what are you going to charge on their their wall socket for 11 days to get your full charge to go back home like <laughs> what are you thinking or not thinking all right so we still have a long ways to go here and it's not like you can walk to the charging station and charge something and bring it back to your dead car you have to get your car towed somewhere and let's just say you wanted to be towed to the charging station that doesn't exist i mean man i don't know it's just the whole life thing this whole ev thing just doesn't work for me because why am i bending my whole life and all my rules to accommodate something that's supposed to just be my transportation and this is not the future. This is not going to work for me. If this was the gas V6, there's a gas station right here. We could just get gas right there. We know it exists. But as far as charging stations, I'm not sure what to tell you there. So let's get over to uh, apparently the YMCA and see if we could even charge there. I mean, we're 0 for 3. Let's see if we're 0 for 4. In the meantime, you can enjoy the silence of this G Genesis G80. It's, it's a great car when it's not an EV. So don't discount the G80 completely. It's a great design. I'm not sure about this faux wood thing, whatever that is. Wood marble, marble turn wood, right. petrified wood maybe? Turn, right. <coughs> turn left and turn right. So it's supposed to be behind the building to the corner there. Let's see if it's there. Turn right. Oops. The destination is on your right. Hey, it exists. You have arrived at your destination. That's your that's great. So here's the problem though. Let's just say you need to charge. Well, what? I don't have uh, a blank account, you say. I have a credit card. Like I would pay for fuel at the gas station. Well, $0.39 cents a kilowatt hour. So in Texas, the electricity rate is 6 to $0.10 cents a kilowatt hour. If you're a guest, you can pay $0.49 cents a kilowatt hour. And you're getting 6.7 kilowatt hours. So you multiply 0.4 times 6.7. So that's about uh, $2.40 an hour, which will get you... Uh, what's 6.7 kilowatt hours based on the consumption? What is that doing here? It's 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So 6.7 times 2 or 6.4 times 2.7 is, well, 6 times 2 is somewhere around 12 miles for $2.40 an hour. 
Yeah, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> That's more than gas. <laughs> so, now you know. <clears throat> I'm not completely hating the Genesis G80. I'm just completely hating the EV concept because unless you do have a charger at home, you can't take use of this. And even if you did have a charger at home, you you are only able to really stay within your home territory. You you actually can't go somewhere and enjoy having the benefits of a regular car. So part of those benefits are it's completely usable. So yeah, sorry to uh crap on your parade, but this is this is the issue I have with this particular vehicle is they've taken it and made it worse. Uh just get the gas one. And as far as the EV, um, I don't know why they did this other than the fact that it's over 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight and will qualify for the Section 179 tax deduction. But I'm not a tax expert, so, you know, go figure. All right. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.